Next week, an alien bounty hunter terrorizes the space family Robinson when a mysterious frozen tomb they have discovered thaws and releases a beautiful ice princess. Watch it open! Watch it open! I think I'd like you to stay a while with Chow. Something special inside you don't want Chow to see, amigo? Why don't you try asking permission before you start nosing around other people's property? It's an insult. Next week, chilling adventure in the episode titled Castles in Space on Lost in Space on this channel. Next week, John Robinson is inadvertently transferred into a strange, unreal, anti-matter world where he is confronted by an exact counterpart image of himself. Now, I've gone to a lot of trouble to get you here, and I need you for my plans. But that doesn't mean that I wouldn't kill you in a split second if you got it my way. Can't be. It is. Until you're finished, understand? Take it easy, will you? I'll take it easy when we're off this planet. Now get back to work. Ah! You'll never get me with that chain! Ah! Next week, Anti-Matter Man on Lost in Space, here on this channel. Responding. It's moving away from us. Who are you? What have you done with my husband and Major West? Next week, weird identical doubles threaten the Space Family Robinson. I believe you wanted to talk to us. Let's get him! Do not resist, it is futile. You know, I think you're trying to take over. And if you know what's good for you, you'll quit trying. Don't you threaten me. Just remember, underneath you're no different than I am. Now look! Danger! Danger! Next week, Target Earth on Lost in Space, here on this channel. Lost in Space, brought to you by... Lost in Space will continue after station identification. Lost in Space has been brought to you by... You know... Lost in Space featured some pretty incredible special effects for its day, but behind the scenes, not everything went so smoothly. This landing of the Jupiter II, for example, would have cost Major West his pilot's license. And here, the space pod looks as if the bloop were at the controls. It's a good thing we got it right eventually. Well, sort of. Alas, poor Smitty, I knew him well. What do you got there, robot? One of the Dr. Smith heads from Lost in Space. Oh, yeah, that was used in The Space Destructors. That's the episode where there were dozens of duplicate Dr. Smiths. Even I was a Dr. Smith look-alike. There is no further need for you. You will be destroyed. No! Pretty scary, huh? Oh, the pain. The pain. <laughs> Remember all the cool guest stars we had on Lost in Space, Robot? I compute there was Michael Rennie from the day the Earth stood still, Al Lewis from the Munsters, even Colonel Klink from Hogan's Heroes. Yeah, you just never knew who was going to show up. I am called Quano. Are we getting old, or is it just my imagination? Speak for yourself. I have not aged a single day. Oh, the pain.
Remember when Robbie the Robot was a guest star on Lost in Space? I have tried to erase him from my memory banks. In comparison to myself, you are very ignorant. You know, I never did trust him. His sensors always look pretty shifty. An inferior example of cybernetic engineering. Yeah, besides, I always thought you were groovier. Thank you, Will Robinson. Thank you. I remember one segment that was particularly interesting. It was called West of Mars, in which I played two characters, Dr. Smith and I played Zeno, the fastest gun in space. And you surrender nice and peaceful. I remember, if you don't make him think you're Zeno, I'll have you covered and zap. That was fun to do. Sometimes people ask me how many Jupiter 2s we used in filming Lost in Space. Well, there was an 18-inch miniature used in a lot of the deep space flying scenes. This 36-inch model for landings and takeoffs, a full-sized upper deck used for our campsite scenes, even a giant full-sized replica that was used in only two episodes, a total of four Jupiter 2s and not a bathroom on any one of them. Robot, a lot of people out there want to know just how many versions of you we used during Lost in Space. That is classified information. Well, let's see. There was the full-size hero that we saw most of the time. Affirmative. And then there was the lightweight fiberglass shell that we used for stunt scenes. Double affirmative. And then there were dozens of the little toy tiny robots that we used when we were invaded. Unfortunately, we all had to split one paycheck. Next time you catch an episode with the Space Pod, notice the registration number. It's actually the phone number for our studio, 20th Century Fox. The IA was for our producer, Irwin Allen. Another reference to Irwin was made in our original pilot. In it, the Jupiter 2 was called the Gemini 12. Gemini is the astrological sign for June, and Irwin's birthday was on June 12th. I don't even want to guess how the bloop got its name. Lost in space, I was able to share the screen with lots of sci-fi gadgets and other space hardware. There was the Jupiter 2, the chariot, the jetpack, the force field generator, and the laser weapons. Lucky for me, I got all the dialogue. The robot's voice and approach was almost was different much of the time. Emergency! Emergency! We did the lines, we had to stay in sync, and sometimes I would do it one way and sometimes you'd do it another way. Affirmative! Another problem that we had, there was no explicit instructions to anybody as to how to equalize the voice of the robot. So the robot's voice would change from show to show, sometimes because of me, sometimes because of the way it was mixed by the audio guys. One day when everybody was excused for lunch, Bill Moomy and Mark Goddard locked me in the robot. So I lit up a cigar. Irwin Allen comes on the set, sees smoke coming out of the robot, grabs a fire extinguisher, comes running over to the robot, and I said, no, no, Irwin, please, it's only me. I'm inside here. And he starts laughing. Became a good joke. My favorite has always been Junkyard in Space. I love the scene between the robot and Will Robinson when the robot Don't is saying like goodbye. Him. You must leave now, my friend. Go and, and do not look back. The touchiness of, of the scene, it was, it was really nice. I always had my guitar with me uh, on the set, and there was this campfire scene that we were filming, and Irwin came up to me, and he said, why don't you play something on your guitar? 
So I picked Green Sleeves, which turned out to be, and I didn't even realize it, the theme song from Lassie. That's right. So I'm sitting there around this alien world campfire playing the theme song to Lassie while June Lockhart is sitting there looking at me like, why are you doing this? <laughs> My favorite episode, Return to Earth, when Will went back to Earth to get some carbon tetrachloride for the food purifier, I believe, is what he was there to do. I made it! I made it! I'm on Earth! I like that show a lot because, I mean, Will actually did get back to Earth, you know, and accomplish something to save everybody. That was the first time he did anything that really saved their lives. The alliteratives that I use with the robot are a source still of great joy to me. You blithering bumpkin! You lugubrious laggard! You cowardly clump! You monstrous booby! You ungrateful underling! Blithering bumpkin! Silence, you cackling coward! Oh, how marvelous! I used to stay up all night dreaming them up. And I use them all. And they'd all work because I get letters about it still. One of our sets was right next to a Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea set. And there would be days when some poor stuntman in a wetsuit would go rampaging through the sea view on Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. And the next day, the same guy would be back in the same suit, only they'd spray him green, and he'd come rampaging through, you know, some unknown alien world on Lost in Space. <laughs> My favorite set on Lost in Space was the Jupiter 2. It had all sorts of working lights and gadgets. But what most people don't know is that the upper and the lower decks of the ship were actually on two different sound stages. That means that when we would take the elevator, the director would call cut. And then we would continue the scene all the way across the Fox lot on another sound stage, sometimes days later. That does not compute. That does not compute. My favorite show was called The Anti-Matter Man because I was able to play a dark side of me. You know, the yin-yang, black and white. You know, I was Don West and then I was the other side of Don West. He's your duplicate, all right. When do we get mine? You know, I could be vicious. You know what I mean? So I could... Oh, I felt good, man. You know, and this, I was gonna, that robot, I was gonna kill everybody, man. I had this... That was great. The best one that I liked that I did was Attack of the Monster Plants. <laughs> Would you like some salad, Judy? No, thank you. Oh, it's your favorite. I don't want any salad. Judy. Mother. I had an opportunity to do some acting, do something with what uh, I felt I had been trained for. You know, Robot, after all these years, you look really good. It is amazing what a coat of paint and a little 40-weight oil can do. Do you ever miss the good old days, you know, hurtling through space aboard the Jupiter 2? Space travel I miss. Dr. Smith, I do not. I heard that. Mind your manners and you'll keep your famous. I can't believe it. It's been 30 years and you guys are still at it. Well, he started it. Did not. Did too. Indeed.